everyone else is watching and they're seeing these big negative Thanks, numbers Lewis. and their confidence gets affected. They are ping-ponging back off each other. People are seeing this and those memories of fear are coming back. Gamble. Any sense? trading at 60. Down. What the heck is going on down here? Uh, I don't know. All of a sudden here, we started hearing screaming, bye, bye, bye. Right now, we're sitting down 875 points. We've now broken uh, Dow 10,000. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped more than 900 points. The market didn't work. It broke down. The machines broke down. Fear came back into the market in a very big way. Workers may face forced labor, discrimination, unsafe working conditions, and other issues that can have serious consequences for them and their families. These problems can lead to poverty, inequality, suffering, and also undermine the economic and social development of countries. These problems also have been aggravated by the global economic crisis that have occurred in recent years, such as the COVID-19 pandemic, and the Russia-Ukraine conflict. To prevent and address this issue, we can apply two sustainable development goals. The first one is SDG8, which promotes decent work and economic growth for all. And the second one is SDG16, which promotes peace, justice, and strong institution for sustainable development. So the term global economic crisis refers to a period during which economies in several nations throughout the world are experiencing a slowdown or disruption for the same reason. During the time of globalization, many businesses will be forced to deal with difficult circumstances and could eventually be forced to shut down their business. It will cause individuals and families to fall deeper into poverty, particularly those who were already at a disadvantage. As a direct consequences of this, there is an increase in the rate of unemployment, a decrease in income, the loss of jobs, and the closure of businesses, all of which can contribute to a rise in poverty and income inequality due to the growing wealth disparity. One of the causes of the global economic crisis is increasing interest rates and stock market crashes. If nothing is done to prevent it, the majority of the factors that will cause the economy to slow down can also lead to a recession. As we learn in economics, when interest rates are high, it is more expensive to borrow money, which discourages individuals and businesses from borrowing money in order to make purchases or investment. When consumers spend less money overall, inflation tends to fall. On the other hand, this can result in a recession in the event that high interest rate causes the economy to decrease by an excessive amount. Moreover, people are more likely to put off making purchases until prices have fallen further as a result of deflation since it lowers the value of the goods and services that are being sold on the market. Deflation can also create a rise in, a, in unemployment since it, since it forces businesses to reduce their operating expenses because people without the jobs are often unable to spend money to contribute to the expansion of the economy. This might result in a downward spiral of deflation. The first one is decreased productivity and efficiency. The term overwork can refer to the rising possibility that a worker exhibits sign of exhausting and stress at work, which would be detrimental to employees or businesses' long or short-term production rates. I think that shortening working hours, particularly in circumstances where length hour costs more, weariness or risk of error or other health-related loss production times. Second is increased income inequality. The inequality of wealth is made worse by exploiting labor practices. The income gap between the rich and poor is split as a result of income distribution inequality, making it challenging to end poverty and impending economic growth. I believe because of the lack of growth in employees' ability development, which has a direct impact on work effectiveness, low and unfair salaries are also a contributing factor. Third is weakened consumer demand because of commodities restricted consumption and the low money available, falling purchasing power will have an effect on the nation's diminishing of per capita income. Fourth is damage to reputation and trust. 
Businesses that are proven to the violation of workers' rights frequently suffer reputational harm and lose the public trust. Sales may fall as a result of unfavorable media coverage, boycotts and public pressures, and commercial ties and end which can also impair the company's brand value. Fifth is disruption in global supply chains. Abuse of workers' rights can stop global supply chains, especially in sectors that depend largely on cheap labor. Production, delay supply, shortage, and greater expenses for corporation might result from strike, protests, or heightened regulatory scrutiny as a result of labor exploitation. And I found this disruption might affect international trade and economic stability. The impact on societies during economic crisis is significant because it leads to the abuse of human rights. This results in homelessness, hunger, limited access to healthcare, and many more. Besides, existing inequalities are worsened as vulnerable groups like women, children, and people with disabilities face more discrimination in areas such as jobs, uh, education, healthcare, and social services. Government often uh, respond by cutting social welfare programs like uh, pensions, which push more people into poverty. And lastly, during economic uh, crisis, governments may restrict uh, civil and political rights using emergency powers uh, or state of emergency to maintain national security or economic uh, stability. For instance, in the context of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, government may have limit uh, the freedom of assembly and protest to prevent virus uh, transmission. However, it is crucial to ensure that this restriction are reasonable uh, to prevent any infringement on human rights or separation of reason. I believe the global economic crisis has a profound effect on resource allocation and redistribution, such as economic downturns lead to reduced government income, which resulting in cuts to government spending and social programs. I would say this disproportionately affects the vulnerable groups who rely on these programs for support, such as we know the COVID-19 pandemic has aggravated global wealth inequalities, with the top 10% holding a vast majority of wealth, while the rest, millions of people, have fallen into poverty. I also believe that the governments often respond quickly to address these immediate impacts of the crisis, but it can worsen the economic fragility, right? such as increasing debt and leading to prolonged downturns while failing to address their sustainability results in rising inflation, reduce the social safety nets and trigger a sustainable recovery. To tell the truth, uh, actually the crisis has actually deepened global inequality and uh, widened wealth gaps and to address these challenges, uh, I would say uh, significant wealth distribution and income in income inequality reduction are necessary from my view. Also, like accessing to constitutional funding um, to reboot economies uh, to and political action is also needed to support a fair and sustainable recovery to prevent further suffering among countries and disadvantaged populations. We were a few days away from the ATMs not working. Suddenly, folks were getting wiped out. I asked her we headed for a Great Depression, and Bernanke said, you know, it looks that way. I'd look into the abyss, and I would see food lines, millions of people unemployed. Hank had just thrown up into a wastebasket. I don't know if it was a panic attack, but the markets were so fragile. We were never going to let it get known. John called a press conference and said, I'm demanding the president have a meeting. It was high stakes drama. The meeting sort of descended into uh, a little bit of chaos. Barney Frank started shouting, where's your plan, McCain? At that point, it was dire. Congress can't get it together. There was fear, and we did it without a playbook. The fact that the American public hates what we did is not surprising, because in many ways, it's un-American. Uh, I think the authority and the government need to act fast because the, this economic crisis is very bad for human rights. Uh, they should 
state should do its job, especially for economy and social rights. We need a new ways of doing things that cares more about the people and the environment rather than the money and the businesses. So the first step is that they should change the policies that hurt the poorest and the minority for a long time and not just depend on the market to decide who gets what. They should be active in helping those who need it and stopping those who are greedy. So by protecting and fulfilling the human rights, I believe that it would be it will make things more fair and balanced. Many might see that uh, this economic crisis will always bring bad impacts to our society. However, they do not realize that it also gives a chance for us to see some positive transformation to our world. Many groups, particularly for the business entity, they are the ones who make some initiative by improving uh, the use of technologies. It is very important uh, for them since they are the ones who affected the most. They need to be prepared with, the, with all the technologies, all the systems, just in case uh, there are another financial crisis happen. So of course, now or then, there will be another financial crisis right in the future. So technically, these technologies are very important to help us in adapting with the economic situation right now. Uh, for the business, the advancement of technology helps them uh, to be more efficient, to minimize the cost, and to adapt with the new market situation. And the second uh, that's a positive transformation that we can see during the financial crisis uh, is the policy. Good policy is the one uh, of the way to build a sustainable, to build a peace a country. Policy, make, policy makers, especially around the globe, will use the, the shortcoming come from a financial crisis to use it as a lesson and to update the policy for the betterment. Imagine. Imagine there are no financial crisis happen. How would we know uh, any flaws, any uh, any shortcomings uh, in our economic systems? So government can use those uh, new frameworks to avoid or prevent any financial crisis happen in the future. So it helps in transparency in the market so that we can access for any risk or vulnerability uh, from occur. I believe even though some people might argue. Uh, that this economic uh, crisis only bring harm to the society, uh, especially to those uh, disadvantages, financial disadvantages, B40 groups, we cannot deny that this crisis also have uh, their positive sides. So we can learn from past events or any global economic crisis in order to build a better economic environment in our society. In conclusion, our discussion on the relationship between the misuse or abuse of rights and global economic crisis has been covered by six research questions. We have found that these issues are interconnected and that economic crisis can lead to an increase in the risk of rights being misused or abused. This can disproportionately harm disadvantaged groups and hinder their ability to meet their fundamental needs. Thus, it is essential for policymakers, economists, and the public to have a solid understanding of the process and consequences of economic crisis. By joining forces, we may work towards a future in which the negative consequences of global economic crisis are minimized and societies are better prepared to overcome economic challenges. This will allow us to move towards a future in which we strive for economic stability equity and sustainable growth a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem yamhaqu allahu arriba wa yurbi as-sadaqat wallahu la yuhibbu kull kaffarin athim